Amen. Amen. To be one with him. Amen. To be yes. one. This is God's desire for you and me that we would give him the glory. Amen. 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 It, is his, it is his desire for, for us, for you and me, to give him the glory. And I just want to be in the will of God. Amen. 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 Again, it is good to see you. Praise God for you. It's truly giving honor to God. Um, who is the head of my life, to Jesus the Son, and to the blessed Holy Ghost. Amen. We thank God for the three in one. We thank God for each and every member, each and every leader of this great household of faith. Amen. 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 We pray you had plenty of turkey. Amen. And didn't fall asleep too hard. Amen. And, and we'll still get up and able to do all you had to do this weekend. But we thank God. Thank God. Amen. That we've had an opportunity. It ain't it good to be where we are? Amen. Amen. It's just good to be where we are. Amen. We count it all a blessing, count it all joy. But how many of y'all know there is a word today? Amen. 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 How many of y'all ready for a word today? Amen. I'm ready for a word. Amen. Amen. Anytime God got a word for me, I want it. Amen. And I'm so happy and glad to get it. Amen. Amen. I'm going to call your attention today to the book of 1 Peter. Amen. The book of 1 Peter. Amen. First Peter chapter one, Amen. I tell you, as I was looking over this, Amen, and I came to what the what I thought was going to be the end of my sermon, and I looked and I said, mm, from from this same chapter, I can preach another whole sermon, Amen, Amen. I'm preaching an Advent sermon, and you know, Advent, Amen, it has four specific weeks, Amen. Because if it wasn't the fact that it was Advent, I'd probably do about two or three weeks on this chapter right here. Amen. It is so good. I got to find a way to bring this back to you, too. Amen. This is an awesome chapter. Amen. We're only going to read a few verses in your hearing from 1 Peter um, chapter 1. We're only going to read um, uh, verses 2 through 5. That's where I'm going to be able to preach from today, verses 2 through 5. I don't know if the Spirit lead. I might need a few more verses, though, because it's just so good, just so you can hear it. Amen. But 1 Peter chapter chapter 1, when you found it, help me honor God and stand to your feet. We're going to start at verse 2. Amen. And it, and it reads, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of blood in the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to the abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in that last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, uh, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom heaven, whom heaven not seen, ye love, and whom, though now ye see him not yet believing, uh, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable uh, and full of glory. Verse 9, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Amen. That just got so good to me. I just had to keep on reading. May the Lord ever add a blessing to the reading of his word, sanctify it in our hearts, therefore making it really good for our souls. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we come right now, God, thanking you for preaching time. God, we thank you, oh God, that you have put us at behind this sacred death, God, that, that you can hide me and that the people may see more of thee. So God, right now in this proclamation preaching moment, God, God, I pray for the anointing that makes preaching easy. God, I pray for the anointing that makes hearing your word easy. God, I pray for the anointing that makes doing your word 
real easy. And now, God, I pray that you get me down deep into your well of anointing. Bring me up dripping wet that I might be able to preach a word from on high. And God, as I preach it, God, let me put it where they can get it, where they can see it, where they can use it, and where they can have it applied in their lives. God, I thank you for that. God, I know you're going to work a powerful work in the hearts of the people today. And God, while you're working that work, God, and while you're anointing me afresh, God, I pray, I pray pray not only do you anoint me, but you cover me, God. Cover me with your covenant, with your covenant keeping blood. Cover me uh, with the blood, the precious blood of Jesus, uh, that the enemy, that the devil, that old slew foot will know who I am and who not to mess with. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Today for our time together, amen, amen, on this first Sunday of the Advent season, amen, and for our time together in the Word on this Sunday morning, I just want to bring, I just want to bring, begin this Advent service with with the sermon, The Coming of Hope, amen, The Coming of Hope, all year, amen, we have been encouraged and strengthened by our God, through our God, by the theme and focus for our church for 2021, which is making room for the new, and can I tell you today, making room, preparing and getting ready is what Advent is all about, amen, it is about the getting ready to see Jesus, amen, it is about the getting ready to receive Jesus. Amen. Uh, can I take it? The word Advent uh, means the arrival or coming of uh, uh, a, a notable thing, event, or person. Uh, can I take it? The Advent season in Christian terms uh, speaks of the coming and the, the coming or expected arrival of Jesus the Christ. Or uh, well, I would dare say, church, that the coming of Jesus was not only notable, uh, but it was noteworthy and your father that it was necessary to the advent of Jesus was notable in the sense that uh, that the calendar widely used today, uh, the Julian or the Gregorian calendars count and record the dates concerning the world with the starting point being the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, uh, can I take those things that happened before his birth uh, uh, being followed by the time stamp B.C. or before Christ. I know you heard of that. Uh, and those things take in place after the birth of Jesus uh, receiving the time stamp of A.D. which stands for the Latin phrase in the year of our Lord or uh, look, oh, our Jesus can I tell you is a notable Jesus uh, or can I tell you the coming of Jesus was noteworthy not just because his arrival was prophesied by the prophets heralded by the angels uh, proclaimed by the shepherds and sought out uh, by the wise men but also uh, uh, because of the emergency of Jesus sparked a movement that bears his very name, Christianity, amen, and it is in and by the name of Jesus that this movement across the world, amen, sparked a massive expansion of hospitals, humanitarian organizations, evangelistic teams, educational institutions and charities. They have all come about led by people who embrace the teachings of this notable Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, education and healthcare in the West, and because of the work of various missionaries, they have branched out to nearly every part of the known world. They were, and they were often founded, they were often founded by Christians in the name of Jesus. Their mission was to make Minister to the needs of the people in the love of Jesus Christ. Names like Florence Nightingale, a leader in modern nursing care, and David Livingstone, a, a, a medical missionary and explorer to the African nations, and William Booth, amen, the founder of the Salvation Army, were all moved into action by the teachings and the works of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, Christianity and the teachings of Jesus Christ made an impact on the world, uh, and they inspired great leaders in the area of social change. People such as Rosa Parks, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Archbishop Desmond Tutu, uh, 
um, Nelson Mandela, it inspired them to fight for equality, to stand up for their rights, not give up their seats and stand for the people, for, for the people that they would be able to see justice and civil rights and freedom come to them. Uh, they wanted freedom from oppressive uh, practices in the nations in which they live. Yes, Jesus was noteworthy. Then the advent of Jesus was necessary because it brought to the people of this world hope through Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. See, can I tell you, the people of earth were in a hopeless situation before the advent of Jesus. It looked like that mankind was on their own. And for 400 years, there was no open word from the Lord. For 400 years, there were no prophets bringing the people a fresh living word from God. Seemingly, God has stopped moving amongst the people. The rituals and traditions of the law were all the people had. But can I tell you, when you need saving, the law cannot save. The law could not heal. The law could not deliver you. The law itself did not bring hope to the people. And though it looked like all mankind was left to fend for themselves, can I tell you, the Lord God had never stopped loving on mankind. That meant that he never stopped loving on you and me. And for that reason, when it seemed like that mankind was so lost, amen, when it seemed like uh, the mankind was on their own, the reality was uh, that no one was missing, for God had his eye on mankind all the time, somebody better get them, uh, see God knew exactly where mankind was, and he knew exactly what mankind was doing, uh, and he knew exactly what mankind needed, uh, mankind had not been forgotten by God, uh, so in the midst of hopelessness, God, oh, can I tell somebody, uh, God sent what was necessary for mankind. God sent hope in the form of Jesus Christ. Anybody glad about it today? Yeah. I'm glad about that hope. Amen. It is that advent of hope, that coming of hope uh, that we want to explore today and what it means to us and for us. Just the idea of hope. I read somewhere in a book that they were doing an experiment and they used a lab animal. Amen. They used a lamb animal and, and they put him in a bucket of water and had no light, nothing but darkness. And, and said in about three, four minutes, that animal gave up and died. Amen. But they took another animal, put him in the same type of water, a bucket of water. But this time, but this time they put a ray of light. Amen. That that animal could see. And because that animal saw that ray of light, then he swam and he, and, he, and, he, and he tried and he maintained for over 40 hours. Can I tell you, there's a difference in your life when you got hope. Oh, somebody need to get that today. Let me help somebody right now. I don't care if you're in a helpless or hopeless situation. I want you to know that you're not by yourself. Amen. That you got hope that there is a light. Amen. And that light is Jesus Christ. Anybody know that today? That light is Jesus Christ. And because that light is Jesus Christ and you know he's coming for you and you know he's out there for you. And you know he loves you and you know he desires you and you know he He's about you and you know he favors you. Uh, you can hold on until your change comes. Come on, uh, come on, somebody. Uh, okay, I tell you today, our text offers some insight into the hope uh, that came and is yet to come through Jesus Christ. Uh, the first thing I want to tell you today is, uh, my point one uh, is this, that you have a right to hope. Amen. Uh, you have a right to hope. Uh, and I don't just mean that you have a, a, a right to hope or an ability to hope as in a right to make a wish or a right to have a dream for something better, amen? Can I tell you, you got more than that. Your hope is more concrete than that. Your hope is built on Jesus Christ, amen? It's concrete, amen? It's a hope in, not just a hope for. Somebody better get that, amen? Amen, you see, see, to some hope is a fruitless exercise. They hope, but it's an empty hope. But what they are hoping in, has not the ability or a very low probability to deliver what they need to come to pass. See, some people wish for a brighter day but don't know enough to come in out of the rain. Some people wish for more money, but so so they play the lottery and they put their hope in 
in the chance that they'll win. Huh? And while some do, huh, amen, some will win eventually, amen, huh, you got a better chance of getting struck by lightning on a clear sunny day, huh, uh, amen, than winning the lottery. Huh? So for most, that's just an empty hope. Huh? Some people wish for, huh, for a better, for better circumstances, but won't do anything to better their situation, amen, huh? like going back to school huh? or reading a personal development book. I'm just here to tell you, huh? see, church hoping huh, for a better day without making an effort to do better huh, is just empty and misplaced hope. Huh? See, what they are hoping for huh, is change, huh? but change needs a catalyst, amen, huh, to make that change happen for you. Huh? See, church, when I say that you have a right to hope, huh, I'm talking about hope in Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Huh? The advent of Jesus brought us to brought us the privilege huh, of having hope in Jesus Christ. Huh? Watch this. Huh? Jesus is hope huh? and Jesus in you is the catalyst to, to ignite huh? all that is in you to inspire the change for you. Come on, somebody. Huh? See, hope in Jesus can and will make a difference in your life. Huh? Can I take you today? Can I take you back to school just for a moment? Huh? I promise you it won't be no math, but there will be, but there will be some grammar. Amen. Huh? We learned that a verb, which is an action word uh, that has no object to receive its action, uh, is called an intransitive verb. Uh, that, that word intransitive means it ain't moving, it ain't going nowhere. Amen. Uh, it's a verb in name, but it's not a verb in action because it ain't doing nothing. Amen. Uh, Amen. Uh, to make it real simple, an intransitive verb, uh, while it is an action word, it's not going anywhere. Uh, example, if I were to say, I hope, uh, you would ask me, how you got, oh, oh what's going on in it? Um, well, I hope, uh, oh, it's going to get better. Well, I hope, amen. Uh, see, uh, as an example, uh, I is the subject, uh, and hope is the verb, amen, uh, um, here. But look, uh, that hope ain't going nowhere because it, it ain't directed to anything, amen. It's not doing anything because there's nothing to receive that action. But if I want my verb, amen, uh, to have life, uh, I want my verb to have movement uh, along with the potential for action, uh, but then I have to give my verb uh, a direct object to receive uh, that action, amen. Uh, and then it, it will be called a transitive verb, uh, a verb that's on the move. Uh, so if my sentence is changed to read, I hope in Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Amen. Oh, God, do you see the difference? Uh, my statement now has an object uh, that is, is able to receive uh, the action that I desire. Uh, or when I say I'm hoping for a miracle in Jesus. When I say I'm hoping for my change in Jesus. When I say I'm hoping for a better day in Jesus. Well, I'm giving my hope something to lean on. You see, when your hope ain't got nothing to lean on and your hope is standing alone, your hope don't know what to do. But when you give your hope a direct object, when you give your hope somewhere to lean on, see, we need, we need somewhere to lean on, y'all. We can't make it on our own. We can't make it on ourselves. We'll lean and the enemy will push us and we'll fall down. But when we lean on Jesus and the enemy come to try to push you, but you're leaning on Jesus, Jesus going to let, gonna let you fall. Jesus ain't going to let you go down. You're not going to do it. You might stumble on your own, but Jesus going to pick you up. Come on. Come on, somebody. You got to give your hope uh, something to lean on. Uh, see, Jesus is my hope. Uh, and Jesus is the object of my hope. Uh, when I realize that it is all right for me, uh, no matter, no, look, uh, that it's all right for me, no matter uh, my situation, no matter my circumstance, no matter my lot in life, uh, to have hope in Jesus. Uh, but can I tell you something then uh, is about to happen in my life? Uh, see, Jesus is going to make it so. Uh, and look, uh, and let me help you, let me help build your faith through this word of God. In 1 Peter 1 and 2 from our text reads, elect according to the Lord, to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you, and peace be multiplied. Watch this. The writer of this letter is addressing this to the saved folk. Amen. Those in right relationship with the Lord. Can I tell you, 
her, amen, these are some folks, amen, even though they are elect, they're the same folk, even though, even though they know the Lord, they're the same folk, they are still some folks that are going through some situations, amen, uh -huh. and I don't care who you are, you get in the right situation, and it'll eat at your faith, it'll eat at your hope, it'll eat at your joy, it'll eat at your peace, it'll eat at you, it'll eat at you, the devil take nipples on you, he'll keep nibbling on you, until he calls you to weaken, until he calls you to weaken and fall, oh, but now, can I tell somebody, oh, but somebody need to say, oh, but now, oh, but now, hope has come, and the person of Jesus Christ, uh, 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 but they have need uh, of a reminder, amen. Uh, sometimes we just gotta be reminded uh, of who we are. Uh, although uh, when Peter began to remind them, uh, he talked about the, the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, he talked about grace unto you. Uh, can I tell you, grace is more uh, than, Lord, I thank you for this food. Uh, grace is more than that. Can I tell you, grace, uh, not only is it the unmerited favor of God, it is more than that. Uh, grace is your anointing. Come on, somebody. Peter was saying, let the anointing, uh, let the anointing of hope. Uh, can I tell you, we talk about look, watch this. When we magnify God, do you know God wants to magnify him in us? When we magnify God, we call down God to come in us. When we magnify God and give him the glory, we are saying, God, we accept you. We want to be with you. Come dwell in me. And God said, if look, if you magnify me, I'll magnify the me in you. Come on. Oh, somebody better get that. More than the absence of chaos. Oh, can I tell you? Peace means means everything whole, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Yeah. Peace. Peter is saying, look, uh, you're going to have hope uh, because the anointing is going to be multiplied and peace is going to be multiplied. Yeah. Nothing broken, yeah. nothing lacking. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I share yeah. my want. Yeah. I'm not even going to want for hope. Come on. Yeah. Uh, come on, somebody. Oh. So when the writer says elect, uh, ain't it good to know uh, that when God says a word to the elect, uh, he's sending a word just for you. Uh, can I tell you relationships? does have his privileges. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Elect. Talking about y'all. The very chosen people of God. By the all-knowing insight and vision of God, God is sending hope for you. See, God wants you to have hope because you know what to do with it. Come on. God is sending you hope because you know how to act with it. God is sending you hope because you know how to testify about it. God is sending you hope because you know how to dance on it. You know how to praise with it. You know how to give it on to somebody else. God is sending you hope. Amen. Now, see, look, uh, I want you to understand through her. Uh, look, uh, through the cleansing power of his spirit. Uh, um, can I tell you, God is sending you hope. Uh, see, Peter, the writer here, uh, is being led to remind the people uh, that when you walk in obedience to the word of God uh, and your sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus, uh, you have grace and peace, anointing and holiness in the Lord. Uh, or oh, let me break that down for you. See, you have the anointing of God, and are made complete in God. When you are in relationship with God, we are not cast offs. We are not orphans. When we are in relationship with the Lord, the Bible says, in Romans 8, 16, and 17, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. I told y'all we ain't no orphans. Amen. Verse 17, and if children, then as Heirs, and heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus the Christ. Then the Bible says in Luke 12 and 32 Fear not, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the keys to the kingdom. Can I tell you hope in 
in Jesus is one of the keys to the kingdom. When the enemy try to lock you up, when the enemy try to lock you down, whatever it be with circumstances, whether it be time, whether it be sickness, whether it be finances, whether it be emotions, whether it be anything that come against you, when the enemy try to lock you down, yeah. you got a key in hope. Amen. Yeah. You got to put out your hope uh, that that hope fit in any lock. Uh, yeah. It will open any door. Uh, yeah. That hope will open up any situation. Yeah. Uh, that hope will set you free. Yeah. You got to stick your key uh, all in the lock. Oh, can I tell you, church, uh, with that being the case, therefore, step up uh, into the rarefied air uh, of entitlement in God. It is good to be entitled in the Lord. Uh, yes, the place of favor with God. Uh, because you are the elect of God, you have a legitimate spiritual right uh, to have hope in Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody need to get that and give God some praise right there. Amen. To my next point, we are saved unto God uh, by the hope sent. By God. Watch this. Verse 3 says, Blessed be God, be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the purification, I'm sorry, by the resurrection of Jesus the Christ from the dead. We have hope because uh, we have been begotten again. To be begotten again is to be born again. And you know, oh, what does that mean? Well, watch this. It means that we are saved from our sins through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross uh, and his resurrection yeah. from the dead yeah. uh, his resurrection yeah. from the grave uh, the fact that he got up bright early uh, yeah. that yeah. first yeah. Sunday morning uh, yeah. it guaranteed that you and I uh, had a right yeah. to the tree yeah. of life uh, yeah. uh, Jesus said I ain't finished uh, Jesus said I know I said I'm finished on this side but I got work to do on the other side yeah. see, it's on the other side that you come through watch this yeah. 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 Look, it ain't enough for Jesus to say to rescue you on this side. You need to take it off to the other side. But it's on the other side. Oh, that was good. Wasn't it? Because it's on the other side that you come through. I want you to understand with your salvation, you come through. I want you to understand with your salvation, you get over. I want you to understand with your salvation, you do more than get by. With your salvation, you win. Come on. Come on. Come on, somebody. We are saved all through through the works. And to us it means that we are given a spiritual reset. Sin had caused a glitch in our system, bogged down our software, and destroyed our hardware. But God, mm -hmm, but God restored us to a place in Him where we are free. Oh, I'm free. No more chains. Holy me. We are free from the penalty of sin all because Jesus Christ and the hope He brings. Come on. Uh, to be in such a place means that, that we have hope in Jesus Christ. And the, the right to have hope in Jesus Christ is a free gift from God through Jesus, his son. But just because it was and is free to us does not mean that it did not come without a cost. Can I tell you, Jesus paid the cost of our sin with his suffering and with his life. It was through the mercy of God that it pleased God that God made our salvation and look at the suffering of Jesus all a part of his divine will, plan, and purpose for our lives. See, uh, that, that his son should be bruised. That his son uh, should face death on the cross. Uh, see, we are saved today, church, uh, by the willingness of Jesus, amen, uh, to come to the earth. Uh, 1 Timothy 1 15 says, uh, since Christ came uh, into the world to save sinners, amen, uh, we are saved uh, by the obedience, the obedience of Christ uh, to the word of God uh, that calls him to live righteous, uh, that calls him to live perfect uh, before the Lord, uh, but still be willing to take on our sins. Uh, second Corinthians 5 21 says uh, for God have made him talking about Jesus uh, to be to be sent for us uh, he who knew no sin uh, that we might be made uh, the righteousness of God in him uh, can I tell you that we are saved by that willingness of Jesus to go to the cross uh, and die for our sins uh, first Peter 2 and 24 lets us know uh, that Jesus bore our sins in his body on his body on the cross uh, that Hebrews 9 28 
fixed it up, fixed up that truth that says Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many. And we are not just born again, amen, but we are born into a lively hope. See, we're not just reborn, we are not just changed, but we are changed from having no hope to having hope. And we have hope through Jesus Christ. And we don't just have any kind of hope, but there's a word there. We're going to get into that a little further in a minute. But there's a word there that says we were born into a lively hope. Somebody need to get that. And let me run on to my third point. That that lively hope is something else. Y'all watch this. Look, there is no substitute for the lively hope. Can I tell you? See, look, there's some folk. Amen. I told y'all about that. Those old empty hoped folk, amen, that, that hope for a better tomorrow, that hope things will get better by and by. There are some folk that hope it's going to be all right. There are some folk that even hoping bad on other folk, amen. Can I tell you, those are empty hopes. God ain't look any empty hope. God ain't in that hope. Come on, somebody. Oh, but there's another thing. There's a lively hope. Can I tell you, that lively hope means something, y'all. It ain't no substitute for a lively hope. And you know what a lively hope really boy that to, it's an anointed hope. Come on, somebody. You want an anointed hope. Uh, I want you to get that. Your anointed hope is better than your old hope any day. Amen. Look, y'all know, y'all, where the spade players at? I know I got some spade players up in here. I got some spade players up in here. You can have an ace, but if I can ace the spade, I'm better than you. Come on. Come on. You can have the little jumper, but if I got the big jumper, come on. I'm just saying a uh, little hope, your hope is trumped by yeah. a lively hope. Because a lively hope is an anointed hope. Yeah. It is a hope from God. It is a hope through God. It is a hope for God to show up in your life. Uh, somebody better get that. There is no substitute for a lively hope. Church, the lively hope that Jesus brings is, is a game changer. So what is a lively hope? A lively hope is a living, strong, durable, and a spirit-based hope in Jesus uh, that is received through uh, the, the rebirth. You got to have a rebirth. You got to have a rebirth. Come on, somebody. You got to have a rebirth in Jesus Christ. Uh, I felt my little DJ coming on. Rebirth, rebirth, rebirth. Amen. Rebirth, rebirth. All right. I felt some rebirth coming on. You got to have some rebirth. You got to be changed. You got to get that thing switched up, flipped around, uh, and turned around. Come on, somebody. See, when we are spiritually born again, Oh, we are not just born into a new life in Christ, but we are also reborn in Christ. Amen. Amen. Watch this in verse 4. Verse 4 says this. We are reborn to an, an inheritance. Uh, to um, an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. And that fadeth not away. Uh, reserved in heaven for you. Come on. Uh, come on, somebody. Who want that? Uh, who want that rebirth? Oh, that, you got a spot reserved in time. You got a rebirth. You got a spot reserved in glory. But can I tell you something? Because you got a rebirth that is reserved in heaven. That also a rebirth for you reserved on the earth. Come on, yeah. come on, somebody. Yeah. 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 no good. You can have glory by and by. But you need some hope right here. Right. Come on. Right. Oh, you got a look. You might get a new home in Zion, but you got a new walk on earth. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on, somebody. Oh, uh, because we are born into a new hope in Christ. Oh, uh, uh, well, we had no hope. Now there is hope. Uh, well, there was no salvation. Now there is saving grace, amazing grace. Uh, well, there was no strength. Now there is power, power in the blood. Uh, well, there was no belief. Now there is faith. Uh, come on, somebody. Well, there was selfishness. Now there is love. Uh, well, there was sorrow. Uh, now there is joy. Uh, well, there was confusion. Uh, now there is peace. Uh, not the false hope of the unbelievers uh, and the hypocrites to the face. Uh, to, to the faith, not the perishing, not a perishing hope, not a dead hope that is not based in God, not given by His Son, nor powered by the Holy Ghost, and does not continue throughout all eternity. But we have been given a lively hope, ushered in through the coming of Jesus, and validated by the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus. See, when Jesus comes home, you gotta believe that today. But Jesus come 
lost hope. When you got saved, you got hope. When you got changed, you got hope. When you got baptized, you got hope. When you became a believer, you got hope. Where Jesus comes hope. And you must believe in and accept that hope and all that comes with it. It is only it is the only way to make it today, church. It's to embrace the hope that Jesus brings. Yeah. Oh, can I tell you, huh? With the singer songwriters, huh? Build and glory a day that we're going through huh? a seemingly hopeless situation huh? and a time in their life. Huh? They wrote a song about it. Huh? And as a testimony in of to their faith and the hope huh? that Jesus brings, huh? He said something like this. He said that God sent his son. Huh? And they called him Jesus. Huh? And he came to love, heal, and forgive. Huh? He lived and died huh? to buy my pardon. Huh? And an empty grave is there huh? to prove my savior. Lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Yeah, because yeah, he yeah, lives, yeah. all fear is gone. Yeah. And because I know, do you know, do you know, no, 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 no. And because I know who holds the future, uh, and life is worth the living yeah. just because he lives. I don't know about you, but that sounds like somebody got some hope in Jesus. Can yeah. I tell you today, church, that hope in Jesus. Can I tell you today, church, that hope entitles you and entitles me to peace on earth and goodwill toward man. This hope entitles us to live under the hand of God, to live under the covering of God, to live under the anointing of God, to live under the favor of God, to live under the love of God. This hope entitles us to live on earth under under the authority of of the kingdom. This this hope, uh, it, it entitles us uh, to call those things on earth uh, and, and, and that are not even as though they were. Uh, this hope entitles you and I, uh, the, the provision of God. Uh, this hope entitles you and me uh, to the protection of God. Uh, this hope entitles you and me uh, to the blessing of God. Uh, this hope gives us the keys to the kingdom. Uh, this hope gives us uh, an inheritance in heaven uh, that cannot be destroyed. All this hope keeps us uh, by the power of God uh, that no matter what the problem is, uh, can I tell somebody uh, hope is the answer. Uh, hope is the answer for you uh, though your faith be tested. Uh, hope never fails. Uh, oh, uh, your faith in this hope. Uh, it, it can go through, get through, uh, and see you through anything. Uh, so rejoice and praise God uh, for the hope. Uh, rejoice and keep on loving uh, and looking for the hope. Uh, I want you to rejoice knowing uh, that when bad times come, you got hope. I uh, want you to rejoice and knowing uh, when trouble times come, uh, you got hope. I uh, want you to rejoice and knowing uh, when sickness come, uh, you got hope. Uh, I want you to rejoice and knowing uh, that when disaster come, uh, you got hope. Uh, I want you to rejoice and knowing uh, when storm clouds rise, uh, you got hope. Uh, I want you to rejoice and knowing when the breakers dash, yeah. you got hope. Yeah. I want you to rejoice and knowing that when the wind blow, you got hope. I want you to rejoice and knowing that when trouble in your way, and you got to cry sometimes, you got hope. I want you to rejoice and knowing that when the enemy come against you like a flood, you got hope. I want you to rejoice and knowing that even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I want you to know you got hope when you can stand in front of the enemy and say, I fear no evil. I stand because I got hope. But I give God the praise, even in my tears. It's because I got hope. I got hope. I got hope. I got hope in the coming of Jesus. And guess what? He's already here. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise. Give God some praise right there. Amen. Woo. God, we thank you. Amen. God, we thank you. Thank you, God, for the coming of hope. That's the advent, y'all. The coming of hope. That's the first word in advent. The coming of hope. And because we got hope, we can fight. Amen. We can fight. We can fight even if we don't see our help because we got hope. We know Jesus ain't never failed. We know he ain't never been late. We know he ain't never lost. We win. Amen. Amen, amen. We praise God for the day. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. We open it up. The doors of the church, this is what we're doing. We are making the way clear and plain.
for salvation. That's what that means. That's a church saying, saying we opening the doors of the church. It's saying that we are open to the opportunity for salvation. Do you know that, that, that salvation is available to you no matter where you are? Whenever you come to a realization that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is hope, that Jesus died for you, that he came to earth, and he lived on earth as a perfect man. That's right. And he died for you, went to a cross, and rose again on the third day. Whenever you realize that, the hope is you get to be saved. Mm -hmm. and, I, and when I say the hope is, I don't mean the wish. I'm talking about the hope, the foundation, the, the, the reality that Jesus is hope. Hope in Jesus is as real as your hand in front of your face. It is that real. It is that real because Jesus is the hope. He is the hope. And once you realize that, no matter where you are, so if you're under the sound of my voice, you can get saved. If you're, because I have just told you how much Jesus loves you and how much he's willing to die, how much he was willing to die for you and how he rose again for you to save you. That's your hope. You might say, but I need a whole lot of stuff. Let me tell you something. If you was a drowning man, a woman, boy, or girl, and you was in the ocean, you you drowning, and, and and all manner of things was available to you at that moment. A million dollars, brand new car, keys to a home, salvation. I help. I'm saying salvation from the seas. Help to get out get out those stormy waters. What would you accept? What would you want? Would you say give me a car? Car ain't doing you no good, I'm drowning. Right. Would you say give me the house? House ain't doing you no good. What are you, gonna do? you might be in need of you might be in need of all those things. But the biggest thing you need right then is somebody to get you out of that water. That's right. Amen. That's Amen. We saved that's from that situation. True. Well, I'm here to tell you right now that if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, you might say, I need this, I need that, I need the other thing. But can I tell you the biggest thing you need right now? You need to be saved through yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. You might have all kinds of needs, but you better get your priorities right. That's right. Because, because getting saved and walking with Jesus goes beyond this earth. Yes, sir. As long as we might live on this earth, the Bible said that, 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 that we promise three score and ten. Mm -hmm. And by reason of strength, ten more. It's eight. And some people do live longer than that, but do you know that that is nothing compared to eternity? That's right. It is nothing compared to eternity. Look, getting saved gives you an eternity with God. Mm -hmm. Getting a new house, a little house, you build it from the ground. It'll, it'll last 30 years yeah. normally. Normally, you got to do some repairs on it and all that. But it'll last 30 years. It might last 50 if it's a good house and you get some work on it. But you get saved. You get saved and walk with Jesus. That lasts for eternity. Amen. Yeah. And it, look, it, it lasts for eternity in the sweet by and by. And the sweet by and by don't never go by by. Amen. 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 It's forever. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's your priority right there. And look, and look, once you get saved, once you live for Christ, the Bible said it, it is God's good pleasure to give you the keys to the kingdom. God will show you and help you how to get everything else. Yes. He'll show you and help you how yes, to get everything will. else. He'll show you. He'll show you how to have faith. Yes. He'll show you how to have trust. He'll show you how to have peace yes. and love yes. and joy. Yes. He'll show you that. He'll, he'll show you his principle about giving, and it shall be given back unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Yes. But before any of that, mm -hmm. before any of the mansions and the cars and the this or that, you need salvation. All right. and, and you know what? Once you get true salvation, you want to give more stuff away in order. Amen. Once you get salvation, you want to you want to bless other folk. You want to yes. do for other folk as best you can. Why? Because you know what gift it is, what God Ooh. is giving you. Hallelujah. So today, if you don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sin, no matter what else you think you might need, you need Jesus more than that. Amen. We open the doors of the church. And those that have heard his voice. And when I say heard his voice, I don't mean just heard me. But I mean heard his voice. Heard, felt his tugging in your spirit. Mm. See, it's something that's telling you to change. It ain't the enemy. 
The enemy don't want you to change. Amen. The enemy telling you ignore him. Ignore him. Ignore him. <laughs> don't listen to him. The guy in the blue suit. Don't <laughs> listen to him. The enemy telling you. But Jesus is saying, come unto me. Jesus yes. is saying, saying, see, see me, let me tell you, I came unto him. I didn't join a church. I didn't join a building. I didn't get saved, become a ground was saved, and, and, and other people mm -hmm. were, were saved. I found out that I got saved because of me. I, I found that out. I found out that I loved the Lord. Yes. I found out I was glad he heard my cry. Ah. I found out I'm glad he Woo. turned me around. Yeah. I found out I was glad that he came into my life with peace. Right. Yeah. I found out that I was glad that he brought me joy. Yeah. I found out that I was yeah. glad that he loved me. Yeah. I was, I was glad that he kept me. Yeah. I was glad that he protected me. Yeah. As much as he protected my grandmama and my mama and them and all, all the other preachers in my family, he did some stuff for me yeah. that made a difference in my life. When I wasn't around them, not even doing what they was doing, uh -huh. I'm doing my thing, and God said, I'm going to save you in hell. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't ah. save you Thank because you. I thought you was going to be good. I saved you because I love you. Amen. Amen. What? Hallelujah. You didn't save me because you thought I was going to preach one day? You didn't save me because you thought I was going to pastor? You didn't save me because you thought I would praise you? No. I saved you because I loved you. That means that unconditionally, no matter yeah. what you ever ended up doing, whether you worked for me mightily or whether you was a slacker, I still love you. Yes. Unconditional. When God, see, God is like that. God is God is the one entity that don't want nothing from you. Mm. I'm, I'm a father. Love my children. Yeah. I don't ask for much, but I do want something from them. Uh -huh. I want to go get for every man. Amen. Crack is coming up. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll joke to say, more importantly, I do want at least this respect. Yeah. God yeah. said, I don't even demand your respect. Mm. Mm. God said, I don't even demand your obedience. Uh, I don't even demand your love. I want it, but I don't demand it. Amen. I love That's you regardless of whether you love me or not. Uh, come on now. Thank That's you. a revelation right there. That's a revelation. Should we love God? Yeah, yeah. we should. Should we honor him? Yes, we should. Yeah. Should we praise him? Yes. But do you want to? Because if you don't, God said don't. And guess what? I still love, love you. you. Uh -uh. Oh, that's a powerful yeah. revelation. Yes, it is. It ain't what you can do for me. Mm. It's just that I've already done it for you. Not that. Why not take it? Why not take it? Yes. Why not take it? Why not receive what I have? Because look, God said, I know what I got to give you is so good. It's going to make you want to run to me. It's going to make you want to serve me. It's going to cause you to want to love me. But I don't care if you don't. I love you. Amen. Now, with God thinking like that, you know God don't want nothing from you. All God wants to do is give you. Why wouldn't you come unto him? Somebody heard me today. Somebody's heart was quickened. Somebody's heart was touched. Yeah. And if that was you today, I'm going to pray a prayer. I'm going to pray a prayer. I call it the I want to be saved prayer. And I'm going to pray a prayer. If you pray with me, you pray and repeat what I say. Can I, can I tell you, God will save you. Yes, He will. If you want to be saved. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. I don't know you in the pardon of my sins. But I just found out that you love me regardless. Regardless, you love me. Whether I accept you, you love me. Whether I serve you, you love me. Whether I admit that I need you, you love me. Never had nobody like that that didn't want nothing from me but to love you. Now I found out that you sent your son before you even heard me say a word. You sent your son for me. To die for me. To prove your love for me. While I was unknown even to myself, while I was in sin, while I was blaspheming your name, while I was using your name in vain, while I was doing all kinds of things, 
Jesus had already died for me. I want that love in my life. That love, I understand, comes with salvation. I want the love and I want the salvation. God, send Jesus to save me. Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I repent. I want to be changed. I want to be saved. Amen. If you just pray that prayer with me, you just ask Jesus into your heart. You just ask Jesus to save you and forgive you for your sins. And guess what? He did. He did. He saved you. And now that he saved you, go ahead and give God the praise. Now that he saved you, tell God to help Thank you, Lord. You me. If anybody's around, anybody you need to tell them, I just got saved by Jesus Christ. Mm. And if ain't nobody back there, would you go ahead and text somebody and tell them, I just got saved. I just gave my heart to Jesus and he saved me. And then do this. Go ahead and get with a Bible-believing church and learn more about Jesus. And as you learn more about Jesus, you bet you could do it. Not going to be able to help a falling deeper in love with him. You're going to see what he did for you and see what he wants to do in you. Oh, that's the change. And then do this for me. If you got a phone, you got a Bible. You, you might not have a physical Bible, but you can Google. You can Google the book of John, NIV. You start reading the book of John. You're going to learn so much about Jesus, who he is, and what he, want, what he wants to do. What he, what he wants to do in you, what he wants to give you, how he wants to lead you, how you can trust him, because he loved you before you even loved yourself. Amen. Do that. And, and get with a church where you can come to church and fellowship, be it virtual or be it in person. We're here every Sunday. We're here, we're on Facebook every Sunday. We're on YouTube under, under the Goodwill Baptist Church, Richmond, Virginia. We're, we're on YouTube. But you can catch a service, you can catch a word, but if you can get here, get here. Get here and be around the, the, the fellowship of the saints of God. We socially distance, we wear masks, but we give God the glory. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Right We're going to get ready to go down from this place. Amen. Yeah. How many of y'all enjoy the word today? Yeah.